Yay Networks. Welcome back to Jojo Mayhem. Welcome back. As of today, the day that we are recording this, Hannah and I have known each other for exactly <laughs> seven years. That's not a very loving way of saying it's our seven year anniversary, Shane. <laughs> It's not our anniversary. It kind of is. It's our anniversary of knowing one another. But we don't have a specific anniversary. Seven years ago today, we became obsessed with each other and it never ended. So I count today as our anniversary. What do you count as our actual anniversary? Well, that's a slight issue for us. Yes. Because we have this anniversary. We have the day that I asked you to be my girlfriend. Which was just silly because it was two months after we said I love you. We have the day that we said I love you. (laughs) Which was two weeks after we met. Yeah. So I just have the day that we met. Wait, wait. (laughs) We have the day I proposed that you would marry me. That's not an anniversary. We have the day that we got married. That's the wedding anniversary. We have too many anniversaries. (laughs) I cannot keep them all straight. This is the most special date. This is the one that we met and it began everything. Like there wasn't a period where we were like, hmm, we're just chatting. It was like day one. We were like, oh boy. This was the day that I woke up and read an email. From a girl in Minnesota. Yes. And very directly fell in love. Yep. Like almost the next day. Let's talk about sex. Oh, okay. Shane. <laughs> Diving right into it. Um, For today's episode, we thought we would relive, you know, some moments from throughout our relationship. Yeah. We're going to tell you about our proposal story. Some never before shared details. Yeah. I don't think we've talked about it since... You proposed, it's and we made a, a video that was like Shane proposed. <laughs> yeah, but and in ha- that, we were like, you know, too in the moment yeah. to really reflect on what happened. And now we can reflect. Now we can reflect. And then at the end, we're going to be playing hypothetical freaks about the next seven years ahead. Oh, boy. To see how awful we can make it for <laughs> one another. But the first thing we're going to do is tell a story that is about sex. We're actually going to read a story. Yeah, Shane's jumping the gun a little bit. Uh, But that is what we're going to do. We are going to read you a chapter that we have written for our book that we've been working on for (laughs) a few of the seven years that we've been together. Most of the seven years. (laughs) Uh, This chapter is about sex um, and about an injury that I unfortunately sustained during a moment of intimacy. I don't think it's too, it's not too graphic or anything. Don't worry. Well, we'll we'll see. It's more humorous. Um. It is written in a conversational tone. So there are parts where I am speaking. There are parts where Hannah is speaking. Yeah. Um, I will also just give the caveat that this is not edited yet. Yeah. And it is part of a larger chapter about sex. Mm -hmm. So it's just a little excerpt. We're not giving too much away. Yeah. This is just a small part of a chapter. Yep. Um, But shall we begin? I think we should begin. Would you like to read the title? I think I go first, though. Uh, sure, I'll read the title. All right, the title of this excerpt is I Guess the Poor Guy Could Get Hurt. Narrated by Shane Burthall with commentary by Hannah Burthall. Why am I Why am I relegated to a lower level? I don't know, because you like have more yeah, you have in way this more. chapter than me. We'll see. No, you have way more. Let's begin. <laughs> okay. I could tell... She was hungry for my body by the way she was splayed out on the couch, shoveling ice cream into her mouth directly from a gallon jug. A chocolate chip tumbled from her spoon, landing in the valley between her breasts. With delicate sensuality, she pulled aside the fabric of the hotel-issued bathroom and used the spoon to fish around for the runaway morsel. I absolutely did not use the spoon to fish a chocolate chip out of my boobs. Our narrator, Shane, is already unreliable. I could barely contain my raging libido as I sat across the hotel room for her, her smoldering eyes focused intently on the television where House Hunters was playing. They were going to pick house number two. I'm calling it now, she said, as the spoon emerged from her robe and slipped the chocolate chip between her luscious lips. That was it. I could tell she wanted me. (laughs) 
because I couldn't physically initiate the activity that I knew she was craving, I had to use my words. Want to lay down and watch together, I said. Anna tossed the empty ice cream container into the dervish tent, ripped off her robe, and said, I thought you'd never ask, my sexy, sexy stallion. I don't even know which of these fabrications to respond to first. Shane and I were in a hotel in Connecticut, and it is true that on this night, Shane and I were intimate. It is also true that I love ice cream, and it is fully possible that I did indeed enjoy a large container of it on this night. But the timeline is a bit blurry. One thing I'm positive about is that I have never, ever referred to Shane as my sexy stallion. So please take his recounting of this night with a grain of salt and know that I will continue to step in when his imagination gets away from him. All right, Shane, you may continue now, but please remember that our family is reading this. Our own children may very well read this someday. With a crazed, devious look in her eye, Hannah barreled across the room toward me. The guests staying in the room below us probably thought the hotel roof was collapsing in on them. <laughs> With one swift motion, she leapt from the ground to the tin-sized bed, reaching out an arm to snatch me from my wheelchair mid-air. <laughs> I was a human ride doll, and she was my puppeteer. <laughs> Shane, reel it in. <laughs> okay, fine. Hannah took my clothes off before removing her own. She grabbed the remote and hurt the volume. This house has so much natural light. A cheerful brunette bellowed from the speakers. The sounds of HGTV have always riled Hannah up. Shane, I swear to God, if this is how you're describing the mundane setup, I am terrified to know what we're going to read further into the story. We assumed a position that resembled one of those brain teaser toy puzzles where you have to figure out how to get two seemingly connected shapes apart from each other. There was twisting, turning, and tumbling. Limbs were everywhere. It was impossible to tell where one body ended and the next began. In the throes of our wild turbulence, Hannah had somehow ended up near the foot of the bed, so I beckoned her to me for a kiss. The last thing I remember before the incident was the sight of my ice cream princess lobster crawling her way towards me. <laughs> Suddenly, there was a flash of light and an explosion of white hot pain shooting through my right arm. What happened? Had I been wrong all along? Was Hannah not my girlfriend, but an assassin sent to destroy me? The pain grew in blistering pulses as it tried to bring myself back to consciousness. Maybe someone had shot me through the window. I looked around for a bullet hole, but all I saw was Hannah's very stricken face. Somehow, I managed to whimper, Call 911. I've been broken. All right, so what actually happened was that as I tried to snuggle in next to Shane, I accidentally leaned too heavily on his arm, bending it in a direction that was very uncomfortable for him. It's miraculous that just a few minutes before, we had been carrying out a variety of ridiculous maneuvering with no issues, but a simple snuggle did him in. While Shane's life was not in danger, it is true that the hotel room was now filled with the sounds of his wailing. Thankfully, my sexy, sexy stallion recovered quickly, and we started to laugh about what had just happened. After coming to terms with the fact that my arm was irreparably damaged, I heroically summoned the strength to stop crying. <laughs> I asked Hannah for a glass of water, which was when we discovered something truly horrifying. I came out of the bathroom holding a glass of water, and my eyes went from Shane lying naked on the bed to the giant window next to him. The curtains were wide open, and I remembered with panic that our room was on the ground floor. Every light in our room was on, and it was pitch black outside. All of a sudden, two headlights pulled into a parking space directly facing our room. I dropped to the floor, <laughs> spilling the water, and trying to find a place to hide my naked body. As the headlights illuminated the room, Shane began to cackle. <laughs> At this moment, we both realized our terrible mistake. How many innocent hotel guests had possibly walked by our window during our recent activities? How many lives had we ruined? I crawled to the window and pulled the blinds closed before getting into bed and dissolving into hysterical laughter with Shane. The end. The end of our excerpt. Oh. <laughs> I still remember that whole, like, that hotel room. I remember the layout perfectly. And we, I don't remember any hotel rooms I did we too. stayed in. I, I did draw that hotel <laughs> yeah. room. 
right now. It is burned into my memory <laughs> no. because of the injury, A, and B, the emotional injury uh -huh. of knowing what we did with a wide open window looking out to a parking lot. I know. Oh, boy. I think you took a lot of liberties with that story because you described a, a hotel robe. Shane, this was like... It wasn't a Holiday Inn, and I don't even want to say what it is because it will be identifiable if like people know where we were in Connecticut. But it was just a regular hotel; like they did not provide robes. I don't know. That's just kind of how I. That's how I envision you. You picture me in a just hotel in robe, normal life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was trying to bring up the sexy factor a little bit. Yeah, that I was the robe. The robe, the dropping the ice cream down your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> lobster crawling across the bed mm -hmm. thank you for that <laughs> all right so our book will be officially like done done this summer this year this summer this summer and we are hoping with all of our fingers crossed yep that we're looking at a release date of like early next year we'll see yep. what happens with the editing and all that but We've had a lot of fun writing this book. Yeah. There's stories about us, stories about other couples. Yep. Um but you really if you if you enjoyed that a little bit, you'll enjoy the book a lot. Yeah. So um thank you for listening to our horrible moment. <laughs> and we're gonna take a quick break right now. And when we get back, let's talk about our proposal story. Aww. Now we wanna thank the sponsor of this episode, ZocDoc. Have you ever found yourself in the middle of an unfamiliar state, in an unfamiliar hotel room, and suddenly, for reasons that you'd rather not explain, your arm is possibly broken? <laughs> <laughs> well, with ZocDoc, you can find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialize in the care that you need and deliver the type of experience that you want wherever you are. Luckily, Shane did not need a doctor for that injury that he is grossly exaggerating. I still feel like I required medical care. You have lasting damage in that Had home. I known about ZotDot back then, <laughs> exactly. I probably would have gotten myself an appointment right away. <laughs> But if Shane did need a doctor, ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Even grossly injured arms. Yes, Shane, even arm injuries. Okay. Millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book a doctor in their neighborhood who is patient-reviewed and fits their needs and schedule just right. When you're not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all of your energy. That's how I felt, just trying to hold it together. Okay, Shane. With ZocDoc, you can choose from thousands of patient-reviewed doctors and specialists, browse doctor profiles, upload and verify your insurance information, and get the care you need. And I'm just browsing for doctors that specialize in injuries resulting from intimacy. Okay. Go to ZocDoc.com slash junkyard and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's ZocDoc.com slash junkyard, ZocDoc.com slash junkyard. All right, time to talk about our proposal. Oh. Let's just set the scene a little bit. This was back in 2019. Yes. So I was a senior in college mm -hmm. that entire year. Like Shane had moved to Minnesota from Pennsylvania halfway through my junior year. So my entire senior year of college, I was kind of expecting him to propose. Like once we were living together, I was like, okay, Shane, <laughs> you can propose. We had talked about it a lot which I think was very responsible of us <laughs> to discuss this large decision. But like we both knew that we wanted to get married. I just wanted to wait for like a perfect moment. You know, mm -hmm. I wanted it to be a surprise and I wanted to figure out a way to make it special. Yeah. We did go to the Eiffel Tower that year. <laughs> that wasn't, that wasn't... Uh... I had something much better in mind. <laughs> so that whole year, uh, my best friend kept being like, when do you think Shane's going to propose? Like, is it going to be soon? And she eventually knew when Shane was going to propose, which I think is funny, but she did not give it away. I think she kept asking like up until the day before you proposed yeah. to throw me off. Like I believe that she was like, when do you think Shane's going to propose? And it was like going to be the next day. <laughs> I wonder how early I rubbed her in I know. to the idea. She was probably pestering you being like, when are you going to? Yeah, I remember a lot of discussion there. Yeah. But the other thing that I like wanted to do was formally ask your mom and dad like for their 
blessing. Yeah. Which again felt like a formality. Yeah. Like we'd been living together for a year and a half. Um I like I loved Liz and George with all my heart and I know that they loved me. I had no kind of real fear that they would be like no yeah but it still was one of the most nerve-wracking moments <laughs> of my life we were at i was at your parents house yeah and you were at class that day yeah i believe so i had like hours alone waited until the very oh. end of it <laughs> i was like not now not now i can't do it i can't do it <laughs> and then i was like hey liz um i would like to ask you and george something oh could you go get george and come sit in the kitchen with me and like i think your mom knew right away yeah what was happening because she got this like like smirk on her face <laughs> and she was like yes <laughs> uh so she goes and gets your dad and your dad made some jokes about like you know what like, is this a baby or you yeah know, like, whatever uh your mom before I even like began talking, you, had, you like clear your throat. I don't yeah. clear my throat, and your mom has tears in her eyes. <laughs> uh, and I asked them, you know, for their blessing, and they gave me their blessing. Um, your mom and dad both said that, like, you know, I'm a part of the family, and they can see how happy I make you, and how I support you, and yeah. um, just like how good our life is together. Yeah. So. Oof. I doubt that out of the way. <laughs> Check mark. Now, and I and I had no idea that that happened that day. Like I just came home and I had no idea. Yeah, you came home. Your mom sobbing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I I wonder what day that was. Like if anything was off, you know. I really wonder. I don't think was so. everyone extra nice to me that day? <laughs> I just had like a great day when I got home. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Um, but the next thing I had to figure out was how to get a ring mm -hmm. without you knowing about it. Yeah. So I, again, enlisted your mom to help me with that. But and you know what I think is funny? What? You made an interesting choice. <laughs> what What I think everyone thinks you're going to say is that you, while I was at class, because I would be gone for eight, 10 yeah. hours if I had swim practice, while I was gone, mm -hmm. you and my mom went shopping as a secret. Yes. That's not what you did. Yes, it is. Uh-uh. Sort of. Maybe some days, but you told me on a day that I was home that you were going shopping for my graduation present. <laughs> That's what you told me. You were like, don't check. I think you thought I was going to like check your location <laughs> yeah. instead of just turning it off and making me think that like, huh, my phone's not working as if I was checking your location when you were just home all day, every day. <laughs> Like you told me that you were shopping for my graduation gift and that was an interesting choice. Yeah. I, I, I felt like if him had not contacted me, you know, if I turned my phone off yeah. or whatever, she might be like, what's happening? Like mm -hmm. where is Shane? So I needed some reason why her mom and I were out in the world together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I came up with graduation gift. It might've been a bit of a giveaway. Uh, the first place that we went, me and your mom was Tiffany's <laughs> and the salesperson there thought that me and your mom were the couple <laughs> at no. first. We had to get over that You're boundary. Serious. Yeah. Are you serious? Uh huh. Yes, I'm hundred percent serious. How do you know that? Did they seriously think that? They said something to me and it, it, this isn't verbatim, <laughs> but we go up to the counter and we're like I was like, We're looking we <laughs> we're looking for a wedding ring, like an engagement ring. Yeah. Um and she like the salesperson turned to your mom and was like, "Oh, very lucky." Oh my! Like, something like that. God, are you serious? And your mom was like, "No, no, 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 no!" And I was like, "No, no, no." <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. That would have been interesting. That's funny. Uh, but we, we went there. We went to another um ring place in Minneapolis, and eventually I found a ring that uh. I think I did a good job, right? Yeah. Like almost by accident, I did a good job. What do you mean? Like I picked out a good one. Without, Why is that an accident? Well, I had not really absorbed the hints uh -huh. about jewelry that yes. you've been giving over. I did send you photos of rings. The years, yeah, don't have them. Uh, Actually, though, I think my taste changed. I remember sending you like those natural stone ones that they're like uncut 
Like I thought, it looked like a dragon claw holding it. <laughs> I remember sending you one of those. <laughs> uh, I should have went with the dragon claw. <laughs> and now that I look back on it, I'm like, oh, I'm kind of glad that you didn't go with my original but suggestion. I, I really had no idea like what type of ring you might like. Yeah. I should have known. Thankfully, your mom did have a good idea yeah. of your taste. Yes. And without like... Like, your mom didn't pick the ring, but she kind of, like, guided me. Yeah. Gently, like, maybe you like it. This style. Yeah, like, gold, not silver. Uh -huh. and, a solitaire, maybe. And, like, maybe when I found the wrong kind, she was like, I'm going to drive you home now, okay? <laughs> We're going to wait and think about it. Oh, my God. Um, but I did end up finding a ring. Uh, <laughs> and I remember a few days before I proposed, and we'll get to that story in a minute, uh, we were, Hannah and I were in the car together, and the ring place called me on the phone, and it came up in our car, like, on the display, and I had to do the most incredible distraction work of my life to not let you see what was on the dash for a minute. What? I know. What did you do? I don't remember. I think I made up something about like my straps. Or... Did it not say the name of the place? Uh, no, did it, it just did. say like Continental said, maybe? No, it said the full thing. Had you seen it, you'd have been like, oh, that's. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. I have no, I mean, I don't remember that. You so don't you, know because you, you did, never saw it. Okay. But you would have been like, what's that? I would have had to been like. Your graduation present. Bam. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was my one moment. I was like, oh no. Like, it's getting ruined, but thankfully she didn't say it. There was another time where I picked up your phone to use Safari, <laughs> and I remember opening Safari and you being like, no. And me being like, what? <laughs> And I didn't see like whatever was open. I'm, it was probably just like you Googling ring places or something. How to didn't... decide what ring to get. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of ring does handle like? But I mean, it, I'm, like the surprise wouldn't really have been ruined because I knew we were going to get engaged at yeah. some point. I just, I did not know like the day or time. Yes. So. So speaking of the day. Yeah. The day arrives. It is the day of Hannah's graduation from college. Yep. I thought that it would be a nice big occasion. Aw. I wanted family to be around fam because family is a really big thing to Hannah and myself. Mm -hmm. um, and I needed or I wanted a way for her best friend to be there. And I knew that after graduation, her friend would be going back home. Yeah. Um, and so that wouldn't be very easy. So. And I thought that my friend was just staying at our house so that I could drive her to the airport in the morning. She was just like flying out the next day. But I guess it was it was not just for that reason. No, it was so that she'd be there when I dropped the bomb. Yeah, that's nice. Dropped the ring. <laughs> Do you want to uh, take them through what all went down? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're having this graduation party. It is Shane and I, my parents, my two brothers, their wives and kids, uh, and then my best friend and her boyfriend. So it was probably like... 16 of us or something mm -hmm. and halfway through the party I am standing in the kitchen and everybody's in the kitchen and I at that moment like now looking back on it I know what Meredith was doing but she I remember thinking like wow she's so comfortable here like she so aggressively walked into the kitchen and began talking to my mom like very aggressive like they were just like in a deep conversation that was like now I know that it was so that no one else was going to like interfere in this. Mm -hmm. But I remember seeing her walk up to my mom and I was just kind of taken aback at like <laughs> how she just like scooted into the kitchen and began a conversation. <laughs> so they're talking and I'm like, oh, okay. Like I'll just mind my own business then. And Shane like looks at me and is like, come here. So I go over to him and he is like, I don't feel good. I, I feel really sick. I put on my acting pants. And you looked sick. Shane was drained of all color. He was like gray and a little sweaty. And I was like, oh my God, you don't look well. Like you actually look sick. And he was like, I'm going to throw up. I, I think I'm going to throw up. I need like to go somewhere else because the kitchen was full of people. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to be in the front of everyone when I puke. Yes. Yeah, so you're like, can you just Help me put my hand up. I need to go in the bedroom. You know what? We told throw-up stories last week. Oh, yeah. This is another throw-up story. Sort oh, of. Kind of. 
but it was believable because these kinds of things happen. So Shane's like, I'm going to throw up, uh, come with me into the bedroom. So we go into the bedroom, which is on the same floor as the kitchen. It's just a little further away. And Shane is like, close the door, please close the door. And I don't like, want them to hear what's yeah. about to happen. And I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, should I grab the trash can? <laughs> yeah. You're like frantic. I'm frantic. You're panicking. Yeah. Because you're about to throw up. Yep. And, and I don't want to use a hand bowl. Yeah, I've, I've dealt with this before at this point. I'm like, uh-oh. Uh, and Shane was like, no, no, just sit on the bed for a minute. And I think that was when I was like, okay, I think something else is going on. And I went over to the bed and Shane was smiling. And I was like, oh my God. And then at that point, I blacked out. Like in my mind, I have no recollection of a single word that Shane said, which is so annoying. I know. And I knew when it was happening, I was like, I'm not absorbing any of this. Like, I don't know what's happening. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. He's talking and I'm not listening. And then you were just like, reach behind my back after you did a whole speech that was very nice. I remember it was nice. Thank you for saying that because I, for me, had been planning out the right words to say. Yeah. None of them that I had planned arrived in my brain in that yeah. moment. Did you write it down? I'd written notes and stuff, but Aww. like I never wrote out like verbatim what to say. I just like over a few weeks when I had ideas, I'd jot them down. Yeah. And I thought that they would, that would all come all together. Come to me <laughs> in the moment. Ooh. It didn't. I was I mean the the throw up thing was acting, but I did feel very yeah. like almost ill. I was so nervous. Yeah. <laughs> so Shane is like reached behind my back. And uh, my mom had hidden the ring back behind his back. So I found it back there. It had been there posting me the whole party. <laughs> was it actually? How long was it there? It, uh, your mom put it there pretty early. I don't remember what time. What if like, I had seen it? We had it tucked like under my shirt. There was no way unless you had like reached your hand back there oh. that you would have seen that. Okay. Don't worry. I, I thought through all this. I was just wondering. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I reach back there, I, I get the ring, I open it, I see it, I put it on. You're like, oh, this is not what I want. <laughs> no. We're really, really happy. And then I I can hear my family outside the door, like whispers and breathing and like scuffling. <laughs> and I, I remember being nervous to open the door because I was like, oh my God, this is embarrassing. Like everybody is standing there. They all know what's happening in here. If you like... Hannah doesn't like attention yeah. from a lot of people all at once, which is why I decided to do it in the bedroom. And not at the Eiffel Tower. Just <laughs> the fact that like her family was outside the door yeah. was a lot for her. So I didn't want to do it like in the kitchen in front of everyone. I would have hated that. You would have hated it. Um, so I tried to make every part, I mean, obviously the throw up thing wasn't the most like romantic thing in the world. <laughs> But I wanted to be alone. Yeah. I wanted family and Meredith to be around. Yeah. Those were kind of the big yeah. things. Aw. So we open the door. They have bubbles. I don't even... Did they have like confetti or something? They had like, they had, like, like the poppers, poppers yeah. things. Uh, <laughs> they were all excited. And I remember opening the door and being like, aw. And then they were all like, well, what did you say? Like they wanted me to be like, I said yes. <laughs> I was like, you guys, like... <laughs> We don't have to do this part, but yeah, I said yes. <laughs> and then they were like, yay. And they did all their poppers. Uh, and that was really cute. And then the graduation party was like a, an engagement party after that. Yeah. It had to double this both. Yeah. I'm impressed that your nieces, who were very young at the time, yep. held this secret. Yep. I was like, obviously, I wanted everyone to know so that they could assemble outside the door while I was doing it. But getting like a four year old <laughs> to keep a very big secret. I know. And not do anything <laughs> weird to me, being like, hey, hey you know? Uh huh. <laughs> it's very impressive. I think I bribed them with like candy or something. Yeah. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> so that was our proposal story. Oh, I cannot believe that that is already going to have been four years ago this That's year. wild. That is unbelievable. We ended up getting married a few years later. So one been, and a half years later, yeah, Shane. Never mind. I don't know why I tried to do... Actually, one year and two months later. I don't know why I do timelines <laughs> because I'm, I'm horrible at them. Uh, but I thought it would be cute to just kind of look back and yeah. reminisce about that special moment. The big moment. In our life. Cute. Aww. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and then we will be back with everyone's favorite game. Oh, boy. Hypothetical Freaks. <laughs> 
All right, it's time for hypothetical freaks. I'm not really sure how you play this about your own relationship. This was Shane's idea for a segment. Uh, do you want to do you want to kick us off, Shane? The idea of hypothetical freaks is to make up hypothetical scenarios that are funny, that are funny and ridiculous. Yeah, we often play this game when we're approaching something like scary. Like a scary appointment. Or so our relationship fits right into that for you? The next seven years <laughs> terrified me. <laughs> and so I think we need to bring a little humor into it. Um, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop shaving. Oh. Permanently. That's fine with me. Is it? Yeah, I don't think that your chin hair is going to grow any longer than oh, one Hannah. centimeter. Hannah. You've seen it get to like puby yeah. level. Yeah. Imagine like three months post puby level when it strangled pubes. Yeah. <laughs> strangled pubes. It's not gonna become more full. I know. But the hair will get longer. It's just that's not my problem. You know what? If you wanna do that, you can do that. I would love to see <laughs> how you react when my sparse puby chin hair that's down to my thighs <laughs> and I invite you out for a romantic date. <laughs> Okay, well, I will just stop showering. That's You're, my resolution. You barely shower now. I know. So what's the problem? You and your <laughs> thigh length pubes and me and my unshowered self will just go out together. And that's what everyone will see. I think that I'm going to get really, really invested in learning to play the tambourine, <laughs> which is A... One of the most annoying musical instruments, mm -hmm. if you can tell it that. Yeah. And B, a musical instrument that I would need my caregiver and loving wife <laughs> to assist me in playing. Hannah, I have a question for you. Answer honestly. Do you support and want to help me pursue my biggest passions in life? Yes, or yes, no? yes. My new biggest passion <laughs> is learning to play the tambourine. You know what would have been funnier though was like the drums. Because can you imagine if I had to do like two hands at once with you? <laughs> tambourine, I think, is more annoying because you have to sit there and hold <laughs> the tambourine as I thumb at it. <laughs> but my practice sessions are long. <laughs> And I don't want to learn to read tambourine music. <laughs> I want to do kind of free form, experimental, avant-garde tambourine. Does tambourine music exist that you would read? Well, you're going to find out in the next seven years. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm most excited about for my next seven years? Hmm. The pets that I'm going to collect. Oh, geez. More and more pets. Oh. I feel like I haven't been living my fullest life. This is like barely hypothetical. It's, it's surely not hypothetical. Uh, I would like to maybe get rats again. Oh, no, no, no. Our rats. first, our first pets were rats. If you didn't know, rats are a really fun pet because they are cute and adorable little mammals. They reach also, but they cute smell. and adorable little animals that live for like a year. <laughs> they barely have a lifespan. It's horrible. Yeah, ours, ours live for. Uh, about two years and then they passed away from uh, one had like a brain. This is not a funny game anymore. <laughs> one had like a brain degeneration issue and the other one had a cancer. I'm just saying sort. they're a terrible pet because they're cute and they're babies and they're adorable. And then they and die. You get connected to them and then they die. Yeah, I don't want rats again. That <laughs> was just a joke. But I just wanted to say something that you would hate. <laughs> I do keep saying to Shane that we should get a lizard or something. like. I a don't want any more pets. <laughs> No, thank you. We have too many responsibilities as it is. Yeah. No more. Mm -mm. You know, it's been seven great years, but I feel like maybe I am not holding up my end of the relationship for household, you know, chores. People tell me this <laughs> online all the time. Uh -huh. I'm a terrible husband because they can't, you know, do the laundry or uh -huh. mow the lawn. In the next seven years... I vow to you, Hannah, that I'm going to begin doing those things. I am going to mow the lawn every day. <laughs> That's too much. With your assistance. Don't do of that. Of course. Oh. <laughs> I am going to get the lawnmower and have you kind of walk it along while I, being involved and responsible and helpful, guide you through the lawn, steering here and there, telling you to watch out. Oh, that's just a stick. Oh. 
I'm in the inside and do the laundry for you. And I, <laughs> and how would that work? Well, if you put the laundry into the laundry machine, I'm going to have you lie me <laughs> on the floor directly below the washing machine. You'll toss up the pieces? No, I can't do that. That takes a lot of muscle. I'm going to have you load it, but kind of drape each piece <laughs> across me oh, so yeah. that I get some physical connection <laughs> to the cast. Um, oh, you know, God. so you slide the pillow case over my face into the washer. Mm-hmm. We'll do the same thing on the way out uh-huh. and then into the dryer. This sounds really fun. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I'm going to be more helpful. That's so helpful. Thank you mm-hmm. so much. For me, for the next seven years, I think something I've been really, really wanting to do recently is reconnect with my inner child. <laughs> Don't laugh. And for me, that means uh, mostly watching <laughs> the television shows that I used to watch. Oh, Lord. So I would like to watch PBS. You watch the weirdest shows growing up. Yeah, PBS and... Later, you know, when I'm <laughs> when I'm at this level, like if I'm going to start with only PBS mm-hmm. as I mature into my older, like 10, 11 years, I will add in Disney Channel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just going to call kind of follow the progression that I did growing up. Why, so are, why are you regressing in these next? I'm connecting years? with my inner child, I, yeah, reparenting your- myself. <laughs> You should learn about it, but we're going to start by, and I don't want any other television in the house. I don't want sports on. I don't want any, you know, other networks on besides PBS. <laughs> so we can watch Dragon Tales, you know what's Caillou, no, oh my God. Cyber Chase, Zaboomafu. This one might end up becoming Arthur. kind of real because we're beginning IVF in like a month. Oh, I'm so excited for we're kids shows. we're ostensibly going to have... An actual kid that yeah. would enjoy these shows. Who will only watch PBS to take after your mother. Okay, hypothetical jokes aside, <laughs> you're going to be so excited to watch children's shows <laughs> with our kid. I will never sicken of Arthur. Oh, I forgot Clifford. Uh, someone help me. <laughs> my, the scheme of hypothetical freaks is turning into me realizing what the next seven years of my life are really going to be like. That's the point. More pets. More children's shows. Children's and children and children's shows. <laughs> yeah, I vow to have multiple kids. Uh, all right. Before this goes too far, I think we should uh, call it a day. Mm-hmm. I need you to drive me to wherever they sell tambourines. I, that's not a thing. Uh, maybe Hobby Lobby I, I, or Guitar I've Center. I've never been to Hobby Lobby. Walmart. Maybe in the children's toy section. Tambourine. Tabernacle. Maybe you should start with the ones that you just put on each finger, like the little symbols. <laughs> sure, then I should play on the go. Yeah, well, you could just tap your thumbs together. And when I, we're in the heart together. And I won't have to, like, assist with the actual tambourine. You can just play the symbols. I don't know. It'd be more fun if we're doing it together, <laughs> lovingly. <laughs> all right, everyone. That is all for today's episode of Junkyard Mayhem. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a comment. A review. A, f- a five star. Yeah. Five stars. All of it. Leave all of it. And? It is a junkyard out there. And if you look, what? Oh, wait. Is that Shane and Hannah on a hotel bed? Oh, my God. What? Shane. Oh, what are they? Oh, look away. Oh, boy. Bye, everyone.